Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And today we are going to start preparing ourselves for the upcoming airport DLC. And the way that we are going to prepare ourselves is by looking at our airport island and rethinking some of what's happening here. So we have a lot of space dedicated to public utilities here. And while I appreciate this, and I think that it's been valuable for the time being, we know that we're going to need more space when we start to dedicate more of this island for airport uses with the new DLC. So as a result, what I wanna do is start to relocate some of these public utilities. So why don't we dive in and see what we have here. Uh, so we have an inland, uh, uh, er, inland advanced water treatment plant. We've got a pumping service. We've got some reservoir tanks. We've got some pumping stations and we have power plants. Now the power plants are probably uh, the, the, the thing that we can leave behind if we want to. Uh, in fact, I, I'm, I'm be really reluctant to get rid of these anyway because we're teetering on the edge with power and at night we're running into some issues. So I think we need to give a lot of thought to what's going on with our utilities and uh, we're going to dive into that in just a moment. Uh, what we're going to do is take a look at this area right here and form a hydroelectric power plant. So I'm a glutton for pain. <laughs> and as a result, we're going to do it again. Did you just did it in Clearwater County. Uh, if you've watched Bluffside Crossing, you know uh, my skill level with these. But I think we're going to do something really spectacular today. But first, I want to go over a couple of things that I have fixed since the previous build in response to your comments. So let's go over that right now. Okay, so first of all, near the zoo and the nature reserve, I added stops to the subway station that was added there. That was a pretty big miss, and I really appreciate you all pointing that out. Obviously, there's a lot of utilization there. Next, all of the lines coming into the, the good old Institute for Conservation had pretty sharp angles. So I, I loosened those up a little bit, made them a little bit gentler, and gave enough space for queuing if there's a backup, and that seems to operate really well now. Next, in the stadium district uh, in Gombe, I made sure that the stops were separated. Right? The, the pink line and the blue line were coming in at the same platform, so that was causing issues. And last, in Meadowview, I removed the extra subway station that I had added and separated those lines using the trick that we used a lot in the last video. Okay, so I want to thank you for that feedback. That was really, really helpful. And I think that your comments made the build significantly better. All right, so uh, in scoping out this area, one of the reasons why I think this is the best place for a hydroelectric power plant, uh, so a, a couple of dams, is because of the water flow and the height that we have here. So if we take a look, we see that there is some significant grade here, and the water flow, if we go in and take a look, pretty strong. And it's going in both directions, which tells me that we could get away with just having one power plant if that's what we chose, but, we could go with two and maybe generate a thousand megawatts of power or something like that. So I've scoped this area out extensively. And what I think we're going to do is try to find a place where we can have a really, really solid amount of power generated. So we're going to scope that out first. And I'm going to start here, I think. So they're saying in this location, this is 400 plus megawatts of power. So this is where we are going to start. But I'm not going to just slap a plant there. We're going to do something special. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn this up and we're going to start to pull some land out. And now I want to do the exact same thing on the other side. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull this here again. Take a look. We did lose a bit of production capacity by doing this, but that's not a big deal. And I'm going to flatten things on the other side as well. So that is the second terrain line up from there, approximately. Okay, so at this point, if we pull this across, we're getting 368. That's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. You might wonder why I am doing that, and it's going to become very clear in just a moment. So first of all, I'm going to use some more of our soil. We're going to make a nice pad here and do the exact same thing on this side. So this is just some minor preparation to get things moving. And the reason that we're doing this is we're going to have a spillway on this side and an office complex to run the dam on this side. So I'm going to come here and I want to slope gently up the side for the spillway. So what I did is I grabbed the height up here using the slope terrain tool, brought it down to here. And now I'm grabbing this height and I'm going to pull that down even further. But I want to 
create a new height, so I'm going to grab one from here, one that's in the water. And now I will do the whole thing. That is great. So what we are going to do with this is grab our shallow canal, and I want to run that straight up here. That is perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead, grab a height that's a little bit lower, so I'm going to go to this thick line here. It's about four meters lower than the ground. We'll just run that across. There we go. Now I don't know the logistics of this happening in real life. I'm going to be completely upfront and blunt and honest with you, with you about that and say that, uh, you know, I'm not sure. But if you are going to construct this kind of dam, you have the financial wherewithal to be able to do quite a bit. So I'm going to assume that this is well within the realm of reality here. And uh, we're going to we're going to go with it. So the next thing I want to do, I'd really love to have some sort of stonework along the outside of this. So we are going to create a shore here so that we can do just that. I'm going to come across and try to form a shore. We'll see if I can create that right here. So keep things straight. I'm adding this bridge here temporarily. So that's a very expensive solution to create a straight line. <laughs> now that I have that road, I'm going to see if it'll let me reuse it. My guess is no, it did. Wow. All right, great. I'm going to take that. And now I'm going to pull this right back in. All right, this is working really, really well. I'll just feather that out a bit, make it look a little bit more natural. And truthfully, maybe that's not going to create the, the effect I was hoping for, so I'll just skip it. Okay, so with that, we have our hydroelectric plant. It's not working yet, but it will shortly. I do want another bridge across from here, and I think we can do that right there. It's not high enough. I'll try that again. So I decided to turn on just my angle to make this bridge happen. Here I'm going to turn it off entirely so I can get it exactly the way I want it. Kind of a kind of a strange little roadway, but it's going to do the trick. And let's see how this is working. We're getting 480 megawatts. That's going to drop down. It's currently in the flood stage, but uh, look at that. And uh, I'm going to speed this up so we can we can get this to, to normalize and steady. Okay, this is about as steady as it's going to get. I believe that's 400 megawatts of power. That's pretty good. I'm curious if I, it's spilling over the edge a bit. If I deepen this just a little bit, if that'll take care of some of this, the issues that we're seeing. So I left it flat up top and I made it a little bit steeper here. And it seems like it's doing the trick. Hasn't impacted our power uh, other than to make it significantly higher, which uh, is a little bit shocking to me. But... <laughs> We'll take it. That's a win. We, we need to take our wins when we get them because <laughs> with dams, there aren't many, but I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling lucky <laughs> right now. All right. So we don't want to just stop at a dam. That's, that's not the end of the, uh, it's not the end of the story for us. So this is going to be a complex that has a significant amount of utility to the city. So again, we're going to continue terraforming. And I want to form a straight wall right here. I'm going to pause this so that I can make a really nice straight wall, get as close as I can. And the reason I want this wall and why this is so important to me is we are going to have some of our water pumps right here. So not only are we going to get power from here, but we're also going to get water pumps. Uh, and, and I think this is going to be a really important area for the city generally in the future as a result. I'm just carving along this contour. To, to make all of this happen. So before I get too far along though, I am gonna pull this out a bit on this end. And I thought it would be really neat to use one of the Japanese uh, uh, Japanese creator, uh, creator pack buildings, the small office building that believes that I'm on water, but we know that we're not. So we're gonna put that there. This will be the operations center for the dam and it'll want water. Well, good news, we are gonna have water. So we'll put that right there for now. Let's start laying out some of our utilities. But I do want to return back to Mulligan International Airport because I want everything to line up and then go maybe a bit beyond. So we have one, two, three, four, five pumps here. 
and two storage tanks. Now, I believe that we have more water pumps over here. And we have two more over here. That is all that we have in the city. So I think that we could really center all of these in this area. Uh, maybe that's not the greatest for redundancy, but it's not the end of the world, I don't think. This should be a fairly safe area. But at a minimum, let's get our five. Or let's just get them all. <laughs> so if we can, why not? I'm going to run a road along here. It's not at all necessary, but to me, it seems very unnatural to not have a road serving this type of use. I'll just send that right along there. Now, from here, we can start to store some water just in case we have an emergency. So I'm going to back that away from that node, and I think I'm going to have even more storage tanks than before. Oh, I like this a lot. All right, so we can't stop here. We also need to look at our water treatment and we had five water treatment, five of these ad advanced inland water treatment plants. So we're going to add those over here as well. I do want to look though. Yeah, there's some ground pollution created from this use. So we are going to need a bit of separation from this and our water tanks. So the way that we are going to accomplish that is to add some separation. Maybe we can add that over at the, uh, maybe around the corner even. So let's take a look at our terrain heights. And it seems like this might be a terrain height that we could work with. So we're gonna, again, carve into the hillside a bit. Now we're on a road back here, and that is lumpy and bumpy and terrible. So we're gonna fix that. We can't, we can't leave that like that. So clean this up. So this is a hundred year project. Uh, this is the kind of project that when you're working on it, you know that you're not, you might not see the end of it. But if you do it right, this project will uh, outlast any family members that you you know right now. And that's that's quite the, that's, that's significant. Okay, so we're gonna need to do even more work here to make this work. So actually, now that I think about it, there's one significant problem with this project. Not a problem having the water up here. Water's great, water goes down. This will actually help with pressure. But for wastewater, we would need to pump this. So if you wanted this to be the height of reality, you would put this at the low point in your city or you're gonna have to pay for pumps, which you don't wanna do. That said, we have a bunch of water treatment over here. I think that we're just going to extend that over here. So we're gonna call a mulligan on this. But we'll keep this area. We're gonna do something with it. So there's we, this. This will have utility for us. So I am gonna come over here, and we've got this new area that we've formed, and this will be ideal for our water treatment. So I do want to find a nice line that we can work with, and we need five of these. Okay, so let's get these connected to the water system, and now we can decommission our old plants and we should be good to go just smoothing uh cleaning up my terraforming a bit if we wanted to get really particular about this because there's not a lot else that we can do over here maybe some industrial we can clean it up a little bit and start to actually put some of that in place so we have a low resident or low industrial demand but it's it's okay this will eventually develop i'm gonna add a couple of industrial uses we'll give it some separation there we go, just a couple. And then over here, I think we're gonna transition away uh, and develop something a little bit little bit different over here. So I don't wanna get too committed to anything in this particular area. So I think we'll leave it there and we'll decommission. We'll come back over here to Mulligan and start to clean this area up. Now these are about a hundred years old, I'm guessing. Maybe not, no, 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 let's say a hundred's probably fair. So eliminating those is not the craziest idea in the world. Now, eliminating the road to the recycling center, that's a crazier idea. <laughs> so we'll add that back in and look at, now we're creating issues. All right. So the issue that we've created is that the power system here is very tenuously planned. <laughs> so we're going to need to add some power lines as we, uh, as we change things. So this pumping service is going to need to stay. And the main reason for that is that this area is prone to flooding. So one of the ideas that was uh, mentioned in the comments that I liked is, you know, potentially looking at this in the future 
and raising this up to address climate change and things of that nature. So that is very well something that we may consider. Uh, that said, I wanna keep things running. So it would be decommissioning one of these and raising it up and uh, trying to keep the other one running. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so let's come back and take a look at our power facility. Okay, we're, we're, we've settled 450-ish. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that. We need do need to get some water pipes here, and I'm sure that are water, water pipes connected here. Uh, that said, we're going to get to that, but I want to get a road up here as well. So I'm going to turn angle on just to give myself the ability to create these in this particular location. And apparently that flooded everything out. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but it didn't like what I just did <laughs> at all. <laughs> so this building i'm going to turn it off for now it is struggling not having sewage so hopefully that doesn't uh, well it shouldn't be a problem it shouldn't be a problem there's no road here uh it's not gonna have garbage or sewage right now so we'll uh we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there so what i think i'm going to do is add a pumping service up here as well we're gonna you know if there's minor flooding like that we're gonna need to be able to remedy it when problems arise so Obviously can't have this hanging off the hillside. This is dirty. So this is what we will utilize this area for. So we're gonna slope up here. And that's really steep. So we'll come back even further. Really trying to get a nice slope on this. And then I'll pull it back a little bit and then we'll feather it out at the bottom. But I don't wanna overlap the road at all so that we don't get any dark line. So that is a very steep road up hopefully not utilized by very many vehicles. And I inadvertently left the industrial roads out, but I kind of like the idea of these being industrial. These should not be used for anything besides industrial vehicles, so, or public service vehicle. And now up here, we will add our pumping service. And why stop there? Let's add another public service facility up here. We will add the the road maintenance depot. So now we've got a little public service campus. We do need to connect these up to the water pipes. And then we have a lack of power connectivity here too. So we'll make our connection looking good, looking real good. So this is another building. Sewage is going to back up, going to turn it off. We will fix that in the future. That is really nice. That's really nice. So you might be wondering, well, now what? We've got this area over here. Uh, it's isolated from the rest of the city. Well, we're going to make a connection. But before we do that, I want to address the other side of the river. So we're just going to have this flooding issue. <laughs> That's not good. So I'm going to uh, attempt to resolve that. I'm wondering if I increase the depth here, if that helps things. So get that water cruising coming down here. But I don't want to hinder our power output too much. And it doesn't look like it has, but you can tell that the water's really cooking over here now. So that's good. Uh, I mean, this is, you know, truthfully, it might have been better to have this along this side. So the water's coming past it, not crashing into it. But that is not what we did. So <laughs> we're going to have to reap what we sow there a little bit. And that, I mean, that does happen. Where you think that a project, the engineering's done and you know, it's all buttoned up and it just operates a little bit differently than anyone anticipated. Okay, so just wanted to clean up the terraforming there a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. I think that does the trick. So now that we have this, let's go to the other side. So I was thinking it would be nice to dictate this, uh, the height of this one with this, but that doesn't necessarily make the most sense. So if we look at this, we just want to find the location where we can generate the most electricity. And this is about the same height, I believe, and we're getting 32. I think this might be more appropriate. And that's 180. Depending on where I go, you see that it's real finicky. So I get 128 here. So this side, I'm going to be far less into uh, creating facilities. We'll say that the other side runs everything. But I will create a pad here. I'll do the exact same thing on this side. And that'll make a roadway connection significantly easier. And that's something that's gonna be important to us because we wanna make sure that these facilities operate together. So we're going to need to find a way to snake a road back around to both of these facilities. So to do that, 
First of all, I am curious. I wish there was a better way of checking this, but I can only come through and kind of trace these lines. And you can see that I'm 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 meters uh, above on this side where I am over here. So what that tells me is that I need to be able to, to get up. I'm going to come through and make some roads that go up. The way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select terrain heights, flatten out where I want my road to be, and then we'll bridge those connections. Okay, so you can see that I've made these pads. And what I'm gonna do with these pads is just go through, click on the higher elevation, and then just slope up to them. Okay, and as long as I follow my terrain, I should be able to create a very nice road that isn't lumpy or bumpy or crazy. I just gotta be really careful with everything. So I'm gonna have all of my guidelines on and start with my freeform tool. I would love to have as many straight segments as possible, so I will attempt to do that. So I'm gonna switch back and forth between the slope terrain tool, or the, uh, the, the freeform tool and the straight tool. And then finally, I will use my curved road tool to make a perfect connection. There we go. Look at this road. Very nice, even, smooth. We look at our terrain. We can see that there are some very sloped portions, but not very many. It's really where it's joining up here. I probably could have been a little bit more patient. Maybe stretch this slope out a little bit further, but even at that, it's not the end of the world. We can accept a little bit of imperfection. Uh, we don't want to let perfect be the enemy of good here. Now, if I go ahead and attempt to fix this, I think we all know what's going to happen. Just going to live with a little bit of imperfection. It'll be fine. And I'm going to pull out the side of the road here. Uh, this will help with some of the visual tearing that you see sometimes, so I want to avoid that. I I've noticed along the river in particular, I have a lot of tearing and it's really painful to me to see that. So and it's easy to fix, you just need to, to make sure that your road has a little bit of extra land off the side and that all of the terraforming isn't occurring based on the location of the road. It's actually occurring because you've terraformed. Okay, and a quick test. I just wanna see when I come out here, you can see that it takes a while for that to break and that's exactly what I was hoping for. That's looking really, really good. Really digging this. Now, what are we looking at here? Not a significant amount of power in comparison to this one. Ah, actually, this one's dropped down too as a result. So it's balanced it a bit. Not surprising. Now we're holding the water on both sides and they're sharing the load a bit. So between the two of them, we're generating about 600 megawatts. Pretty good, pretty good. So here, now I need to get the power connection made, and I'm not sure the best way to approach this just yet. It might be going behind this, and this might be the, 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 the approach that we take for now. So now these are both connected, they're part of a system. Not the most beautiful thing, but at least I don't have to see it from down the hill. Look at that pink sky, just beautiful. This is the Kira, uh, Sierra Dawn. A really, really beautiful uh, cloud set, uh, uh, cube map. So really like that. All right, so a couple of things. If you notice, we're not that far from our observatory. And I think that what we're gonna do is make a dirt road connection over here and then our proper connection down to the highway. But to make this worth our while, we're gonna need to develop something. And the development rights to this particular area would be very valuable. Look at the view you have from up here. You get to see the city in all of its beauty. You get to see sunsets and sunrises. What a spectacular spot, even though you're surrounded by power plants. So we are going to attempt to create a hillside development over here. And I want names for this. So let me know what you guys are thinking in terms of names, and I will certainly include those. Uh, but first, I do want to make this roadway connection over here. We have a stub road coming up here in, from in between our trade school library and the laboratory. And we are going to pop right in here and add a dirt road. 
Now this very well might be upgraded in the future. Again, I wanna see how many meters I need to go up. Let's come here. I'm just gonna add a line for my own memory's sake. Again, it's 60. <laughs> so that uh, is interesting. Uh, this time, I think we're gonna try it without smoothing and we'll see how that goes. And I do not want to connect up to this road here. I want the through road to be the dam. So we will extend this out just a bit and then we'll pop back in and make our connection here. Finish it off with the curved road tool. So this is a fairly unnatural looking road. Even though when we were looking at our terrain, we were cutting across it in a fairly logical manner. Still is kind of rough to look at. So I am going to clean it up a little bit with our, with our, uh, by pulling this out. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side as well, just carve in just a bit to give a bit of space for the road. I'm gonna actually start on the other side because if we use the height over here, we should be okay all the way up the side because we're gonna, we're gonna feather it off anyway. There we go. And to finish it, we are going to reduce our strength and just come through and smooth things off just a little bit. And actually, I'm not going to reduce the strength. I am impatient. <laughs> so... Nothing too extreme here, but it does make everything look a little bit nicer. That's what I was hoping for. Gives a bit of separation. Now, maybe we don't need to add a fence on here, but if we do need to add one, you know that we have the space to do so, so much better. The other thing this adds is a path for us to add some water pipes, and it's a fairly gentle path, so we'll do that now. There we go, and now that I think about this, this is such an expensive roadway uh, with all of the grading that went on here, it probably would be paved, but even at that, we'll just, uh, we'll, uh, we'll let it be for now. Uh, but if this gets a lot of utilization, we are absolutely going to uh, upgrade this road. This will be the very first thing we do. So I'm very pleased with how that turned out. And we now have our water up here connected into our system. Now in reality, these would be separate systems. There's no way that uh, all of these communities would be connected together. In fact, in Verde Beach, there would probably be multiple water systems. But even at that, we can get away with it in the game and we're going to because managing multiple water systems in the game without a mod would be absolutely impossible. So <laughs> we're not gonna worry about it too much. And look at this. I flooded this out by removing the water pumps. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Hopefully not too big of a problem. I'm gonna speed this up to try to get through this. I think it's just a, a temporary thing. Ooh, these planes are doing some things. <laughs> Stalled out in the water, flying right into a little wave pool. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So we've uh, cleaned a few things up here and we'll continue to decommission things as we can. And I'd love to decommission this, but we have our road maintenance facility here. I think I could add a node there, delete the rest of this road and still have it function. So we're gonna do that. That's just fine. And this is good enough for now. We are likely going to want to do more here, but we need to keep this thing running while we wait for the DLC to be released. Okay, so now we've got power up here. We've got water. It's all connected in. We should double check. Power is not connected, but we're seeing a significant power uh, generation. Water availability is awesome at this point. Sewage is this, you know, we didn't add to our capacity. I like to keep the water availability and sewage availability relatively even. I didn't do that. And uh, that'll probably be something I, I wanna rectify in the future. So we're we are looking good. So the problem right now is this is one gigantic cul-de-sac with a dirt road connecting to it. So that's not ideal. We need another path down the hill. So it's pretty steep for quite a ways down, but it does get better once we come here, things start to slope a little bit better. So to me, this is the natural path down. And the real question is once we get, I'll take a look again here, we'll plan with our dirt roads. This right here is our natural path. I think that we come through here, minimize that slope. 
and add our road straight through. But where do we go from here? And that's gonna be a real trick. So let's see how many meters of height we have to, to contend with. 190 meters. <laughs> Lots of switchbacking here. So we are going to, that's, that, that's basically gonna be our game plan. It's just to switch back all the way down here. So what I'm gonna do is look at our major uh, contour lines and we are gonna add a switchback location. And we're gonna center that on this slope right here. So I'm just gonna grab this one. And by the time we are done with this, we are going to have created Machu Picchu. <laughs> so <laughs> that uh, it, you know, it's a thing. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work with it. So we're gonna need to do lots of sloping here, and it's going to be some rough stuff. So we're gonna come up here and slope our way up. Selecting that top height and then just modifying it a bit. So select that top height, go to the bottom height and come up. And I'm now seeing that my my math didn't work. So this bottom line, we're gonna get rid of this. I'm not gonna worry about this one. And now for the fun part, now we need to make the road itself. So I'm gonna turn on everything and we're gonna try actually that's even worse than just looking at it normally we're gonna just eyeball it and hope for the best with this so angles not gonna help us here for the most part nor will grid we're just gonna need to trust our instincts where we can if we want to use road guidelines to try to line things up nicely we can do that Woo. Now that was a project that is not for the faint of heart. That took a long time. It was very complicated and I'm guessing it would end up being the pride of the city at some point because of how unique it is of a feature to the community. Now I look at this and I think it's pretty obvious that you shouldn't develop this, but that is not the way that people work. Uh, all you gotta do is look at California and you can see that people develop areas that are pretty. <laughs> so if uh, there is a view, if there's a natural feature, it's getting developed if the development opportunity opens up. And we'll finish that off with a nice sweeping curve up and we're gonna upgrade this one. This is the road that we would prefer everyone takes up. Now, I, I can't imagine a world where the, this road has sidewalks, but it's uh, city skylines. It's a game, we'll take some liberties. But yeah, this likely is the type of road where there's parking and you gotta go up this road very slowly. Very, very slowly. There are actually surprisingly few segments the game didn't wanna upgrade. I thought it was gonna be much, much, much worse, but there's a couple and we'll have to we'll have to fix those thankfully if we use our, our curved road tool it shouldn't be too difficult although it looks like we're losing some of our slopes here which is part of our problem so I'll need to free flow uh, free form it and the curved road tool does a great job too so not the end of the world there we go very very steep angles there uh, but it'll do the trick. So this is one approach. The other approach, we could have just had a, a, a fairly sharp road with a whole bunch of angles, but I think this is gonna look fairly neat. We'll probably wanna make a couple of connections up where we can, where it makes sense. Uh, from an emergency, manage, uh, emergency response point of view, this would be an absolute nightmare. So uh, I am gonna add a couple more connections through here, but I do wanna look, let's see how, yeah, that's 20 meters. There really aren't many opportunities. When I, as I look at this, it's uh, sheer cliffs. So we might be stuck with some of these unless we add a road like this where we kind of cut up diagonally like that. And even that, that's pretty terrible. We made that a little bit better. That saved a little bit of time, but not, not significant. I think we'll do the same thing in a couple of other targeted locations though, just to try to reduce the trip length. You gotta, you gotta think, if it's a fire truck, I don't know that they're even gonna make, be able to make this. So, it's nice, but not super helpful. So, uh, I'm gonna be very cautious with how I develop this. 
I want to make sure that the lots make sense. So I'm going to go through and be really thoughtful about my lot sizes. Okay, and I got this started just a little bit. And what you can see that I've done is I've kind of spotted in some zoning. I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera. We'll use a little bit of YouTube magic to get this going. But I think we're going to try to have a line of these to make our power connection for the time being. Okay, so these will eventually connect, but they all need water and that's going to be a problem. <laughs> so let's get that going. Now, it's really unfortunate to have these water systems not looped. There's not really a good way for me to do this. If we take a look at our terrain here, you can see that, yeah, I guess we could sneak one back there. Yeah, we're going to do it. We'll do it. I, I don't think that this is necessarily the height of reality, but it is a good practice to loop your water system. So power issues galore. You're going to attempt to solve some of those now by making our power connection that will eventually connect this area to the rest of the city. So I think that it's pretty rational that the power line would just kind of cut down across at some point, and that is the some point that we're going to cut across at. So I am going to add a couple of commercial properties to enter this space, and that should help us make our connection. There we go. Now all these abandoned buildings have power. Perfect. <laughs> all right. I'm going to finish up zoning this area and through the power of YouTube, we will uh, take a look at that in just a moment. Okay. The zoning is done. Now a couple more things to make this seem a little bit more reasonable. This is a really challenging development in general. Would this happen? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> this is, that's, that's one of the, the, one of the things about a development like this. I don't love some of the assets that it's going to choose. So you can see that I've come through and I've really intentionally cho chosen all of my home spots here. I don't want any, any development to make it in I guess to, to, to kind of have a weird contorting sort of thing happening. So I tried to be really uh, intentional with my development. Unfortunately, that also means that I limited the number of assets that can be used. There's a mixture of commercial and office along here makes a connection here. I don't love this. In fact, I don't love this to the point that I'm probably going to get rid of this and just have a power line <laughs> as ugly as that might be. That to me seems a heck of a lot more reasonable. Uh, what we're going to do now is go through here and get rid of some of the random landscaping because it's not showing up in areas that make sense. Okay, so now that we have that, we have a little, a little bit of grading to contend with. So this is a challenging one to deal with until everything develops out. But I think that coming through here and just pulling out this a bit makes it look a ton better. So I'm just coming through here and you figure that when these homes are built, they would be given a little bit of a yard, not a big yard. They're on a mountainside after all, but they would be given something, something to, to clean it up. And the same thing here. One of the reasons I didn't just zone everything is now I have the ability to choose where I have a cliff and where I don't rather than just having it be completely random. And ideally during the planning process, the developer would be looking at where the contours are and placing the road in a location that that fits so an example of what i was trying to do and, and didn't necessarily succeed at right here i didn't want those homes to have an impact on the contour here and it did so now i'll just pull this out get rid of that excess landscaping and we're looking good and we have our first fire we'll get to test to see how well this works because <laughs> it's probably gonna be bad Hey, it worked. <laughs> so lots of eminent domain on homes that were placed inappropriately. Now it's, it's interesting, you know, in, in speaking about that, that's been a curiosity of mine. You've seen it in planning magazines where they talk about some of the issues with where homes have been built. This is a location that I think you and I know is bad for homes. Uh, it has poor fire access because of the roadway network, and this is a fire prone area, but that doesn't mean that people wouldn't develop there. That just means that uh, 
we're, we would have more problems. So it's it's one of those things that uh, is really a challenge. And I put a bunch of one unit homes and I think some of the cases it works really well, like right here, but in some of the cases it doesn't work so well. So I'm gonna eliminate some of those and then give some of these homes just a little bit more room to breathe. Okay, and I'm feeling a lot better about this. Obvi well, whoops. Obviously a couple places where maybe we've got to give this a little bit more thought. So near the bottom of the hill, the idea is to keep the land, uh, the, the zoning a little bit, a little bit tighter. The views aren't quite as good and you know, you're closer to the city, you maybe have some of the smells of the paper mill, but then the further up you go, the bigger the lots get, the more space you have and the better your view. To me, that is a logical development pattern that you would see if you're gonna have some sort of crazy one <laughs> one road uh, situation right here where you have all this traffic snaking up, which is actually pretty considerable in this area. Uh, the other thing that you might wanna add here and you know, maybe in the future I'll consider it is, is some walking paths. I mean, that, that's something that you'd certainly see. It's just really steep and there's already a lot of development. It's very, uh, it's a very unique development for this entire area. No services there, no parks. Uh, that's pretty common for these sorts of hillside developments. Uh, they're entirely driving dependent. That road is terrible. We'll get rid of that. Uh, I wonder how bad the other one is. It's less terrible. Still not good, but less terrible. I think what we need to do is have a real quick city tour. Okay, so I really feel like we've accomplished a lot today. We've done some interesting things. I'm wondering what this has done to our traffic flow. <laughs> uh, 86, 87, it hasn't made a difference at all. Uh, when we look at our power, 176 over there, 256 over here. So we're dropping down a little bit. Maybe that's to be expected with our spillway over there, but this is very predictable. We I haven't seen any issues over here in quite some time. Uh, this whole area could certainly use some decorating and maybe I'll save that for a live stream. It's been a while since I've had one and uh, I, I've missed the streaming with you guys. Uh, and hopefully uh, the next time will be more successful than every other time I've had where I have uh, royally botched it. <laughs> so we'll see. But I think we're going to leave it here. I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit the notification icon. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.